Okay, I'm going to do a start to finish high level overview of how you can grab an image online, like say like a star uh, decal, right? So you want to do a star decal, you want to cut that out uh, with the CNC plasma cutter. So you're going to take this, right click, you can either view the image or just save it as, or you just copy it. Copy it's the easiest. What you want to do is have and download uh, Inkscape. So Inkscape is what I use. It's pretty easy. Um, the version that I'm using is uh, 0.48. So it's a free program. You just download it and uh, install it, and it pretty much works uh, pretty good. So you can paste this image. Now, that's just a a normal picture just you know so you have to get rid of yeah, it's kinda like pixelated so you want to get rid of that you gotta convert it to a vector so which is uh, if you just do a shortcut key shift alt B and that shift alt B is in boy um, basically this window comes up and this is gonna trace the bitmap which is gonna be tracing your picture so you would do an update and hit OK and if you just click and drag this you see how nice and sharp those lines are? Crazy, right? So if you are on the picture, look at this brightness cutoff. You can lower this and increase it or what have you. The lower you're gonna get some weird weird results. It's gonna because it's looking at the brightness. So if you look at the pixelated edges, that's why you're gonna get some weird stuff. Uh, so what you route you pretty much have to do is just uh, mess around with this threshold here until you get kind of like what you want. 500 is a, a pretty good one, uh, depending on what you know, how dark or how th you know thick you want the lines. Um, keep it in the middle, do one, and then uh, you know mess around with it until you get exactly what you want. So basically, after that's uh, done, then you want to set you know your height, your width, whatever. You can do that here. You can select whether or not you want it pixels or inches. I use inches because I'm going to import this file and do Inkscape. So, uh, or not Inkscape, but um, SheCam. SheCam is what I use to uh, convert from the vectorize to G-code. So I'll show you how to do that. So basically, uh, you have an image. It's, you know, it's just over 5 uh, and 5 eighths uh, uh, width, you know, this way. And so anyways, you want to go ahead and save it as, and we'll save it as star, right? And save it to the desktop, save. Now, basically, we're done with Inkscape. You can alter this, change things around. This little uh, icon up here to the left, just under the arrow, that's going to be all your paths here, right? So you can zoom in. If you just hit your control button uh, on your keyboard and then roll your mouse, you can go in and out, right? So you can change this. By clicking on them, you can delete them. You can, uh, I mean, you know, you could do, you can do anything you really want. Um, pretty simple, pretty easy. You can manipulate drawings however you want them. Every one of these is called a node. Uh, so yeah, you could, you know, you can make your own drawings. You can get creative, and uh, you know, come up with some pretty cool, unique stuff. But. Uh, that, that'd be like another episode later. I can uh, show you some more stuff. But anyways, just for this uh, tutorial, we're pretty much done with that. Um, done with this. And now you want to go into uh, SheetCam. Now, once you've downloaded SheetCam, you got a good copy. You've already got your, uh, your, your uh, tool set already. So what you want to do is import your drawing. And then we're going to import the star. That's what we saved. We saved it. It's just going to come up as a an SVG, which is a, a, a vectorized drawing. And we're not going to scale it. We're going to keep it to the same scale. We're going to start our position here on the left corner, which kind of defaults to that anyways. So here we go. So the yellow is going to be your inside cuts, and then you're going to have your outside cut in red. You can also go up here to the edit contours, and if you hold your control key down, you can and then right-click, you can move it to a new layer, so you can say like outside, right? Uh, you don't have to do that, but now that outside is going to be on a layer of its own. So what you want to do is over here to the left, under operations, you got a jet cutting operation. 
Um, now the layer, since I already did a layer, I want to do the white because the white's going to be the inside now. And I want to do an inside offset so I can keep my cutter on the inside of this line here because I want to keep my material exactly the same. I can cut on the line, but once you get down here in these really close uh, corners, you know, you're going to, uh, with the plasma anyways, you're going you're gonna to probably gonna cut all this out, which is not going to be good. So you want to stay on the inside. Uh, 80 inches per minute, we're, we're going to cut depending on the thickness of material and how you have your uh, plasma set up. Uh, we're going to cut some 12 gauge, so I'll keep it right about 80. And now the lead ends is basically the plasma is going to come down and it's going to have a little lead in. I'll show you what that looks like. You can do an arc, perpendicular, tangent, whatever. Um, I'll just keep it like this. This is the way I use uh, so you would have it. Okay, so basically not all the offsets are going to be uh, on here, so you can just move these around where you want to start your cut. You start in the corners here, which is always pretty nice. Um, so if your lead-in is too much, then uh, you might want to change some stuff around. But you can move the way you want your paths in to start. Then what you would do is you would select the outside because you want to cut your outside last with an outside offset and hit OK. And basically you can change the where that's going to start as well. Since you're going to end over here, um, you can start over here on this corner. Now this is going to be a, a lead in. So the machine's actually going to start here and it's going to come to the material which is what you want to keep this line here. So it's basically going to get a ride right in the middle of this green line. Now my what they call the uh, the kerf is going to be about fifty thousandths of an inch. Um, that's about how wide that little cut gap is is going to be. Um, and then when it gets done, it's going to come right around this corner and then come out just a little bit. And basically, that's that's what the lead in is. Sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't. If you don't, then you can always go into Inkscape and actually create your own, uh, you know, lead in and lead outs which in a lot of cases, if I want something to be perfect, that's what I do. Uh, after that's done, you've already selected a post-processor, which I have a custom-built one. Um, basically, once you, once you select your post-processor, you're going to save your... You can do a tap. You know That's what I have it set up for, because I'm going to import this now into mock. So I'm going to uh, save my G code as a star, right? Star.tap and it says it's done. I also have an editor down here so you can kind of you know edit some g-code if you want to uh, speeds or settings or you know what have you. Uh, once that's done you're basically done in she cam so you can close out of that and you can save it if you want. Now you have to go into mock. So in my mock 3 I want to load a G, my g-code from my desktop which is star. It's going to automatically load my tab file so once it comes through, here it is. Now you can click on this little uh, display here. Roll your mouse. If you uh, right click, you can actually drag drag your you know, your 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 thing around. If you want to uh, left click, you actually convert this down into like what the 3D path is going to look like. Um, so yeah, you double click it, puts it back in a you know like normal uh, perspective here. So. Um, so that's what it's going to be, and then once you turn it on, you just run the program. Once you've zeroed out where your cutter is actually going to be zeroed, you know you got to compensate for where your your material is. So uh, you would hit the reset button, hit run, and my machine you can actually see it moving. And over here to the uh, right is basically where the material is. Now you notice that it's keep it's going to go down, down, down because of this this code here it's looking for zero and it's going to go down to at least five inches or until it actually sees the uh, the material based on the ohmic sensor that I have so you'll see it it's going down it's going down it's looking for the material now if you look down here digitize I'm gonna hit my digitize button and there it goes it's set zero and it retract to a hundred thousandths and then once it started to cut it moved down to fifty five thousandths of an inch and that's about the height where I want to cut. The torch uh, height controller goes ahead and it, it takes care of the rest. So it's going down, it's going down, it's going to look for the material, and then boom, it sees it. 
and you'll see that little digitize button uh, come on and uh, there it goes and it's cutting so it's gonna go around and every time it it goes down to cut a new uh, path it's gonna look for the material and until it sees it and then it's gonna go ahead and zero the plane go to 100 hundred thousandths of an inch and then uh, pierce and then start moving and then as it starts to move it's gonna go ahead and drop down so it's moving down it's moving down it sees the material zeroes out comes back a hundred thousands starts to cut and you can see the plasma on which is a uh, indication of that it's actually cutting and then um, that's pretty much it so that's exactly how you would do a uh, you know basically grab a, uh, a picture online and convert it to a vector using Inkscape saving it as an SVG file which is like an Inkscape standard and then once that's done you import it into your sheet cam you convert it to a G code using the post processor um, and then uh, you would import it or open the uh, the tab file into your mock your mock 3 or you know whatever you're using actually so anyways that's pretty much it that's uh, a high over, over overview of what I uh, what I do and um, yeah hopefully uh, you enjoyed it